is the news focus in Africa and the world. We open today's edition in Africa starting with Ivory Coast. The Constitutional Council of Ivory Coast has officially validated the presidential candidacy bid of President Alassane Ouattara, clearing only four of the 44 candidates for the October 31 presidentials. The final list of candidates adopted are as follows Alassane Ouattara, Afinge San Pascal, Harry Konambeti, and Kwadio Konambeti. Bertin. The Constitutional Court, by so doing, barred former President Laurent Gbagbo and ex rebel leader Guillaume Soro from standing in next month's election. The announcement sparked violent protests in many cities as many fear a repeat of the post electoral crisis from 10 years ago that left thousands dead as the upcoming October elections promised to be intense. A delegation from the military junta will meet with the economic community of West African state ECOWAS in Accra, Ghana this Tuesday, September 15, to discuss the transition process in the country following the August 18 coup. Sources close to the board of directors have stressed that the delegation will make proposals for an exit from the crisis and listen to the position of the regional body that tried to mediate in the political crisis before the coup whereupon Ibrahim Bubaka Keita had to leave the presidency. The regional body had given the board, named the National Council for the Salvation of the People, CNSP, before Tuesday to appoint two civilians as president and prime minister of the country, which has not yet been attained, leading the country to further possible sanctions. Updates you will have in our next edition, so stay tuned. Ghana presidential election, the Progressive People's Party, PPP, has become the second political party to go into the 2020 presidential election with a female candidate in the person of Bridget Zogbenuku as its flag bearer. Acclaimed and endorsed by the party in Accra recently, Bridget has promised of changing the face of politics in Ghana when she is voted into power in the general elections on December 7. She added that both the National Democratic Democratic Congress, the NDC, and the new Patriotic Party, NPP, have taken Ghanaians for granted for too long and it's time the country changes to political party they entrust power into, which the best option, of course, is her PPP party. Bridget replaces Dr. Papa Kwesi Ndum, who decided not to contest the flag bearer position again due to ill health. An entrepreneur, politician, former business executive, just to name but these, Bridget Zogbenuku joins six other persons who have so far been elected by their respective political parties to seek the mandate of Ghanaians in election 2020 to pilot the affairs of the country. Out of Africa, some 700 people are set to attend Tuesday's ceremony at the White House where Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and the Foreign Ministers of the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain will establish diplomatic relations. The event in the White House to be presided at by President Donald Trump will be the first time Arab nations have established relations with Israel since Egypt in 1979 and Jordan in 1994. Before the ceremony, Netanyahu, who meet at the White House with U.S. President, who broke out the diplomatic breakthrough, according to an Israeli official. The UAE and Bahrain representatives will each meet with Trump separately as well ahead of the ceremony. Hundreds of people are invited to attain an symbolic handshake between the Arab representatives and Netanyahu is not ruled out. Septics, including many long-time Middle East observers, have expressed doubt about the impact of the deals and lamented that they ignored the Palestinians who have rejected them as a stab in the back by fellow Arabs.
British MEPs have passed the government controversial bill designed to override parts of the Brexit divorce deal at its first hurdle in the House of Commons by a majority of 77 Monday evening. The internal markets bill, which Boris Johnson's administration has admitted, will breach international law by allowing the UK to override Brexit deal provisions on Northern Ireland secure 340 votes in favour with 263 against. The result was boosted by the support of eight MPs from Northern Ireland's Democratic Unionist Party. Several senior conservatives from the ruling party have, however, said they cannot support the measure and some are thought to have abstained. The bill also has to go before the upper chamber, the House of Lords, where upper votes could significantly delay the legislation. And Russian President Vladimir Putin has granted a $1.5 billion loan to Belarus in face-to-face -face talks with the embattled Belarusian leader Alexander Lukashenko at a Black Sea resort. Putin said the Belarusian people should resolve the crisis without foreign interference, adding that the proposal by Lukashenko to carry out constitutional reform was logical and timely. The meeting in Sochi was their first since anti-government protests escalated in Belarus last month. Putin congratulated Lukashenko on his victory at the time but later described the vote as not ideal. His actions have so far suggest he has no desire to see the leader of a neighboring ex-Soviet country toppled by pressure from the streets even if Lukashenko has often proved as a fractious and difficult ally. We have come to an end. Thanks for watching and until we meet again, do take care and stay safe.